It's no secret that Home Alone 2 is nearly identical to Home Alone, but I wanted to find out exactly how identical the two movies were. So I watched them side by side and found 50 ways Home Alone 2 copied the original film, ranging between the obvious to the obscure. And the first one happens right away, when both films open with the credit roll of the house logo, with John Williams' score that blends together the movie's two main themes, though the way those themes are blended is slightly different between the two films. Both movies transition out of the title screen into an establishing shot of the house from the same angle. And given how identical everything is in the scene, I'm convinced this is the exact same shot, with just a little more brightness and color saturation in Home Alone 2. Once we see inside the McAllister's house, there's a ton of commotion from the family running around everywhere to finish getting dressed for the choir concert and packing for the trip, which is just like the commotion we saw in the first movie. And the first time we see Kevin is in his parents' room, where he talks with his mom Kate, and packing his suitcase is mentioned at some point during the scene. And the first time we see Kevin's dad, Peter, is also in that scene, when he's concerned over packing electronics for the trip. In Home Alone 2, he was looking for the camcorder battery, but in Home Alone, he was looking for a power converter for his electric razor. Both films have a scene where Kevin's presence is unwanted. In Home Alone, Buzz gets upset with Kevin about entering his room without knocking. But in the sequel, Kevin is an uninvited guest in the bathroom, when Frank catches him eavesdropping on his shower singing while trying to get his tie for the choir concert. During the choir concert, Buzz teases Kevin by pulling a prank during his solo, and Kevin retaliates by pushing Buzz off the risers, which causes a chain reaction that ruins the whole concert. Which is like when Buzz teases Kevin about all the cheese pizza being eaten, and Kevin gets angry and retaliates, which causes a chain reaction of destruction in the kitchen that ruins everyone's dinner. After the concert is ruined, the whole family stares at Kevin disapprovingly while waiting for an apology which is just like when he received the same disapproving stares from everyone after ruining their pizza dinner. In both films, Kevin refuses to apologize for his involvement in the disaster, goes into a tirade about how he doesn't want to spend Christmas with anyone, and gets sent upstairs to the attic for the rest of the night. Then both stories also have a moment when Kevin is reminded he'll be sleeping in the attic with his bedwetter cousin Fuller, who we see smiling with raised eyebrows while sipping his soda. After Kevin is sent to the attic, both films transition to an ominous-looking moon outside, and the winds of change start to blow in, where the power is knocked out in Home Alone, but in Home Alone 2, it's revealed the wet bandits escaped from prison. The following morning plays out the same, with the airport vans arriving and knocking over the McAllister statue, and the McAllisters wake up in a frenzy and make a chaotic dash to get ready and off to the airport to make their flight. Both movies have a scene where Kate feels something is wrong, while Peter tries to convince her that everything is fine, and then she screams when she realizes Kevin isn't with them. And when Kevin realizes he's in New York, he makes a shocked face in disbelief that he's separated from his family, just like he did in Home Alone when he thought he made his family disappear. And once Kevin realizes he got his wish to be by himself, he glances at the camera with a sly grin while raising his eyebrows. Then, we see a montage of Kevin having the time of his life exploring the sights of New York, which is very similar to the montage we see of Kevin having the time of his life around the house in Chicago. As Kevin finds the location of the Plaza Hotel, he crosses paths with the Pigeon Lady, who is the new scary adult Kevin is afraid of, just like he was of Old Man Marley the year before. While at the Plaza Hotel, Kevin watches Angels with Even Filthier Souls, the sequel to Home Alone's movie within the movie, while eating ice cream and getting freaked out by a scary part, which is an obvious callback to Kevin doing the exact same thing in Home Alone. In the next scene, the concierge tries to sneak up on Kevin to find out if he's there alone, and he peeks into the bathroom to find what he believes to be Peter McAllister singing in the shower. But we know that it's just Kevin using strings to make his inflatable clown move to trick the concierge into leaving, which is just like when he duped Harry and Marv with his elaborate house party, by also using stringed up dolls to convince them to leave. Amongst all the fun, Kevin takes time to look at a picture of his family and gets homesick for them, just like he did the year before. And ice skating makes a subtle comeback that intertwines the two movies, because in Home Alone 2, we see the two crooks at a public ice skating rink while scheming up their plan to rob Duncan's toy chest. But in Home Alone, it's Kevin who is the crook, who accidentally robbed a toothbrush from a convenience store, and uses a public ice skating rink to evade the police. When Kevin visits Duncan's toy chest, Mr. Duncan is there to ring him up at the cash register, and is suspicious of a nine-year-old kid shopping alone with a bunch of cash, which is like Kevin's trip to the grocery store, where the cashier is also suspicious of Kevin for the same reasons. 
When Kevin leaves the toy store, he runs into Harry and Marv who chase after him, and Kevin literally gives them the slip by dropping a bunch of necklace beads on the ground to make them fall down, which is a callback to the same thing Kevin did to them before with Micro Machines. As Kevin makes his way back to the Plaza Hotel, he's also chased by the front desk staff over his illegal credit card use. But he's able to avoid capture by fooling them with a playback of the scene from Angels with Even Filthier Souls, just like he did to Harry and Marv in the first movie, using the similar scene from Angels with Filthy Souls. After Kevin escapes, we cut away to the McAllisters in Miami, watching It's a Wonderful Life in Spanish, while waiting to hear from the police on Kevin's whereabouts, which is just like the year before, when they were watching a French-dubbed version of the movie in France while trying to figure out where Kevin was. While feeding some pigeons at Central Park, Kevin is horrified to find out they belong to the pigeon lady, who he tries to run away from but can't because his foot gets stuck. But Kevin soon discovers she's not as scary as he thought she was, when she helps him get free which is similar to Kevin crossing paths with Old Man Marley at church and being frozen by fear until he finds out his elderly neighbor is actually a friend rather than a foe. Kevin and the Pigeon Lady listen to music in the rafters of Carnegie Hall, where they discuss their different family issues and impart words of wisdom to one another to help each other overcome their struggles, which is just like Kevin and Marley discussing their family issues and exchanging bits of wisdom while listening to music at the church. When Kevin determines to foil the crook's plans to rob Duncan's toy chest, we see a montage of him setting up his traps at his aunt and uncle's renovated house, while we hear a Carol of the Bells inspired score, which is just like the trap montage we saw and heard in the first film. When the McAllisters arrive at the hotel, they discover Kevin has gone missing, so Kate decides to go out on her own to look for her lost son like she did before. When Harry and Marv arrive at the house, Kevin throws bricks down at them and hits Marv several times in the face, leaving scars that call back to the scar he received on his face from the iron. After Marv comes to his senses, we see him stumble up the stairs to the front door, which is the opposite of the last time when he stumbled down the stairs after slipping on the ice. Once Marv makes it up the stairs, he's greeted with a door that's rigged to shoot staples through the keyhole, where he's shot in the groin and in the face, which is like when Harry got shot in the groin and Marv got shot in the face with a BB gun. When Harry swings on a greasy ladder, he takes a big fall and lands on his shoulders, which is similar to when he took a big fall off the McAllister's front porch and landed on his back. When Harry reaches the back door, instead of getting a blowtorch to the head from the back door like before, he's smacked on the head by a bunch of tools instead. But Harry wasn't out of the frying pan yet, so to speak, because Kevin rigged a light switch to set his head on fire again, and instead of dunking his head in the snow to put it out like he did before, he dunks it in a toilet filled with kerosene. Another classic callback of Marv's, even down to the cinematography, is when he jumps on a rope to climb through a hole to reach the second floor, which sends down a bag of cement that smashes his face, which is exactly the way it looked when he pulled down the iron that smashed him in the face. The classic paint can gag returns, which the crooks are wise to this time around, but the new twist is that they're caught off guard by a pipe that hits them in the face. After Kevin pushes a tool chest down the stairs and smushes the crooks up against the wall, he celebrates by saying yes with a fist pump, which is what he did before after shooting the crooks with his BB gun. Kevin uses a rope to escape and flee the scene, just like when he used a rope zip line to escape from danger at his house. When the crooks chase Kevin down the rope, Marv gets scared of heights just like he did on the zip line. Then when Kevin surprises them by lighting the kerosene soaked rope, Harry tells Marv to go back which is exactly what he told Marv to do on the zip line when Kevin surprised them with pruning shears. As the crooks fall from the rope, Marv lands on top of Harry, which is the opposite of what happened in Home Alone, when Harry fell on top of Marv after they got hit with the paint cans. After Kevin flees the scene, he runs away to use a payphone to call the cops, just like when he called the cops from his home while trying to flee the scene out the attic window. In both films, Kevin thought he was free and clear, but makes a mistake and the crooks gain the upper hand, where they apprehend him and threaten his life. In Home Alone 2, the pigeon lady sneaks up on their crooks just in the nick of time and subdues Harry and Marv with her signature object, the pigeons, which is exactly what happens in Home Alone, when Kevin is apprehended and threatened by the crooks just before old man Marley saves the day by subduing the crooks with his signature object, the snow shovel. After the cops arrest the crooks, Marv's loose lips get them in bigger trouble when he immediately divulges more details about their plot, just like he did when they were arrested the first time at the McAllister's home. Both films resolve with Kate finding Kevin, and then when the whole family is reunited, 
Buzz offers kind words as a truce, to put their earlier disagreement to rest. But while the family continues on with their joyful celebrations, Kevin sneaks away to have one last goodbye with his new grown-up friend, who now has a changed heart because of their previous conversation. And one last laugh is delivered when Kevin's dad yells at him for how much money he spent at the hotel, just like the last laugh in Home Alone, when Buzz yells at Kevin for destroying his room. But if you want to find out 9 amazing details you never noticed in Home Alone 2, click the video on the screen to enjoy more great content right here on Fun Fact Films.